Welcome back. Welcome back. Hope you're all enjoying yourselves with this show that Clara is putting on and that we are putting on for you, of course. I'm so. Um, it's, it's ridiculous. Congratulations on the whole epitaph thing. Thanks. You nailed it. I don't even want to talk about that right now. I know. That's not even what I care about anymore. I, I know. <laughs> and that's what's so good about it. Ah! Oh my god. What this the fuck? is the, this is the whole thing. Oh my god, I could just gush about this story forever. Like, like the mystery and part, the epitaph. Part of me wants to be myself and be an excited, like, performer as I am for most of this series, but we're right back into, like, I know. what do I even do about this? Well, like, I mean, all of the things that you've been saying, like, these are the people who are the primary accomplices. Like, they knew everything from the beginning. This is how you saw the epitaph. Here is the solution and what it means for the characters, right? Yeah. Um, The mystery in this story and this... More gushing about you, because yeah, I'll try and keep it short this time. But, like... The riddle is the answer, like, and, and the mystery, uh, and this is why I, like, I really enjoyed, I, I really enjoyed going through this story and you trying to puzzle everything out, because that's how it's designed to be read. But at the end of the story, it's not actually about the murders and the mystery. That's the hook. It's about the story of this character who, like, has, has, like, this tragic backstory, which normally I hate tragic backstories, and, like, learning all about them and the way that they express themselves through these like characters that they create and their relationship with like why someone would want to be a witch like taking all of these things that normally i would be like fuck this this is stupid yeah like, i mean i've mentioned it a few uh, times but like if i was reading this through myself i'd be like what the fuck is this shit <laughs> i don't i don't care about this bullshit but because of the way they were doing this i have to like stop and think about it definitely and, you know why the writing choices were made and you mm -hmm. know the fact that like we're getting all of this before the end. Yes, but not it's episode early. seven. Like, like you were like, oh, I'm sure that we'll get the answers in episode eight. But like, what else is there at this point? What else do we need I'm answers on? I'm terribly concerned at this point. <laughs> well, um, um, yeah. Uh, anything you want to say, or shall we continue? I I have nothing to say. <laughs> it's okay. Like, I still don't. I still don't feel it. But. It, like we're getting there. The, mm. the the cracks in my old stone heart Look, are starting to appear. If you cry, if you ever cry, I have never seen you cry in this playthrough. I've no. cried multiple times. But only, if you ever cried in this playthrough, I would be. I so... nearly got there at the Angie Burger. Oh, Very nearly. That was my first crying time. Still, the only movie book anything that has ever actually made me cry, and I've probably That's, mentioned this you know before, yeah. is Boromir's death I in know. the Fellowship movie, which is a beautiful moment. For that just the, the wonderfully my, tragic my character. My brother, my captain, my king. Just yeah. that line. Every fucking yeah, time. It's so good. Every fucking time. It's so it's such a good character arc. Um, and we shouldn't. <laughs> this is not the Lord of the Rings podcast. Although, if you wanted to do one of those, I'd be down for it. Uh. But like, <laughs> uh, this yeah. is this is the closest I've ever gotten in media after it's, that. It's like, I'm I'm the kind of person when I approach a story, when I do my like theory crafting, and I wonder what it is. I'm always looking for the most tragic outcome. But I, I did not even come like close to this story in my theory crafting. Like I was, I was not, I was not here, and it's just, uh. I, yeah, I got close in broad strokes, mm. but like the minutia of like, oh hey, I'm your father. Also, I I just, I'm just gonna die now. Yeah, they just die. Yeah, it's fucked up. Like that entire thing of her, and also of, of her being like. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn about my, my father and my birth. I'm like, those are not good things to learn about. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if you wanna learn that. Let's keep going. Yeah. As Let's... much as I say I have nothing to say, I could keep going we could keep talking. no conclusion. We could keep talking about nothing. What I, what I mean is I have no conclusion. Um, well, we've only, we've only been going for four minutes. Let's I feel go. like we need to be- <laughs> Let's <laughs> okay, go. Okay. I can't, I can't keep talking about this. I'll that, talk okay. myself into it. Okay, well, let me speak. Oh my God. That is the end of my tale. Oh. Is that all? But are the next two years pretty fun? We don't need them. After all we've heard in the past games about you in a conflict and how you suffered, mm -hmm. you don't need to say any more. Yeah. You mean, the conflict of the furniture with incomplete souls? There was a duel. The result had almost been decided. However, the year 1986 was incredibly merciless. I'll bet you cursed your fate. Yes. If it had been one year sooner, or else one year later, the duel would have been settled, or well, the way it got settled would have been different. Mm. Silently, Claire hung her head. If only I had been given time, or else if I hadn't been given time to worry. I hate everything. Why did it have to be 1986? Oh, are we going there? Oh. I decided 
who abandon control over everything. This would be really hard to play, can I just point out? Yeah. What do you mean? The, the piano line. This is... Oh my god, is this end of the world? I don't know. I'm almost certain this is end of the world. End of the world. Yeah, the Let's end of the go. world. Abandon control. Like the ceremony in which I inherited everything from the previous head, I decided to abandon myself to the fate known as a miracle. It may be more accurate to say that I abandoned myself to the choice of the roulette. I... We... Could not even decide our own fate. So we let fate decide everything for us. Yeah, this is definitely the end of the world. Perhaps one of us will find what they seek. Perhaps all will be joined and released. Or perhaps someone will put a stop to this folly. No matter which fate the roulette chose, I plan to obey its ruling. I will not resist fate. After all, whenever I have tried in the past, fate has always been heartless to me. Claire hung her head and let out a single, let a single tear drop down. Humans will carelessly say that people possess infinite possibilities. However, the Endless Witch knows how limited those possibilities really are. So, out of her limited fate, she tried to create the infinite. By entrusting her fate to God, she tried to create the infinite. However, this did not mean that she was assigned to her fate. She spun the roulette of fate with an unshakable and certain will. A certain fate where absolutely no one could escape if the epitaph was not solved. She sealed off the island with it, herself included. October 4th and 5th, 1986, was sealed away by an absolute and certain will. And she abandoned herself to that short span of time and the one fate out of many that would be chosen on that island. And now, my confession is over. Isn't that enough to place my motive for the crime? If you still do not know, I will say no more. It's not as though anyone could understand my heart, anyway. Well, yeah. There's no need to say anymore. Leon. After watching how I've wandered through my a dead end of fate, do you see how great a hope you are to me? I'm a different person, possible you. The happiness you live in makes me jealous, but even more overwhelmed with happiness. The future you represent was a possible one. Right now, that fact alone is my salvation. I... Please, live with enough happiness for both of us. I'm glad I got to meet you once, at the end. You have my thanks, Lady Burn Castle. I'm just carrying out your funeral. There's no need to thank me. Hmm. Well, it's about time to end this. It's about time to send the dead to the land of the dead. Yes. This is my funeral, after all. It's time for me to go back to where I belong. I... Don't make that face. Please, rejoice that you were not me. After all, I rejoice in that fact as well. I'll live. I'll live here for the life for the both of us. Thank you. Live in happiness. And someday, find yourself a wonderful person. I pray that you live as a human, without awakening as a witch. That you have a whole and single soul, and love one person with all of your strength. I hope you live that sort of life. I will. Well, son, I thank you for being an observer. You aren't the one I truly wanted to understand me, but... You have saved my heart. I understand you. I don't neglect the heart. Thank you. So, now that I have a splendid observer who understands me, I want to entrust my final moments to you. Are you sure you're okay with it being me? Yes. For me, the important thing is whether the person understands me, not how well I know them. You should get your notes ready. Oh! Oh! Shh. Oh! The one I wanted to understand didn't. A person I don't know did understand. There's nothing sad about it. On the contrary, I'm grateful for this miracle. <laughs> it's an emotional moment. A person was able to understand, even though he has no relation to me. You're a good observer, Felix. And the only one who has managed to understand me. That connection is strong enough. Go line. Understood. It's gonna play, it's gonna play on a nocturne! Oh my god! I offer my heart to you, nameless and wonderful observer. That's not it, that's not it yet. We're close! Leon, stand back. Huh? What's going to happen? In the mystery genre, there can be no death unless a detective performs the last rites. 
Ah, the determined look! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm getting them! I'm scrolling! I'm scrolling! There's Get them up before we continue! So much to Get scroll! Them through. There is so much to scroll! Oh my god! Holy shit! I don't even know how I didn't think through this them. was gonna happen! Uh, I didn't think <laughs> this was gonna happen! The hype! I didn't think the this was gonna hype. happen! Let's go! <laughs> well, just stopping your hearts be enough. When you mourn the dearly departed, you put just their heart into the coffin. Got it. That you're just born from Earth will return to Earth. <laughs> I'm breaking my voice. <laughs> I'll return all of you to the Earth. Earth to Earth. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. Illusions to illusions. Illusions to illusions. And dreams to dreams. And dreams to dreams. Here it comes. I've never heard those I'm editions. I'm getting fucking dizzy. My all head is once. spinning right all now. All at once. Oh my god. <sighs> right. Fucking will it right. Oh no. And let us begin. This is my burial. Got a nocturne. Come on! I need it! Whenever you're ready. Let us start. This is almost like the end of my last game. Light gathered at Wool's back, and a sword materialized there. Oh, here we go. Edgelord Extraordinary. Oh, there it is! Oh my god. What, <laughs> what is that edgy shit? Oh, it's so good. What is that edgy nonsense? Slowly, he drew it out. Oh, it's bling! Ah! It's pitch black tip, which could neatly slice apart truth from fiction. Swung once, leaving a black trail, and then again, leaving a white trail. I love that it's black and white because it's like, not only is there the whole thing of like, you know, black and white truth and truth and fiction, mm -hmm. but it's also like the fact that the white is still portraying truth in yes. terms of like the writing. Yes! Ugh. Go! Let's go. I'll cut the truth out from the fiction. Come. Oh my God. Following Will's lead, a similar sword appeared in Claire's hand. It's typically glinted silver, the opposite of Will's. First game, first twilight. Six corpses in the guarding shed. Illusions to illusions. The corpse that cannot return to Earth returns to illusions. Yeah! Uh, I, I, here's the thing. I feel like a lot of people reading this would be like, what the fuck, that's not an answer. Yeah, it is! Like, come on! It's so, it is! It's so good! Ah! Did we peach a set? I hope so. We so did. Yes! Will's peach bike slash cut across Claire's body at an angle. The blade passed through her like she was water, but its tips sent golden flower petals scattering. Now this is the scene I want animated! Oh my god. First game, second twilight. Two corpses are close in a closed room protected by a chain. Can't wait for this. I can't wait for this. Illusions to illusions. A chain of illusions can only trap- yeah! Illusory chain! Two for two boys! <laughs> The razor thin black blur sent golden flower petals scattering again. First game, false twilight. The old head from the closed room study confined in a scorching furnace. Illusions to illusions. Let the man of illusions go to where he belongs. It's so fucking edgy. Oh. You edge lord! Ah, oh, the purple slash! First game, fifth twilight. The last moments of the sacrificed boy with a stake in his chest. Illusions to illusions. The witch in the stake of illusions can pierce naught with illusions. Yeah, because I never pierced it! Three for three! Yeah. First game, six, seventh, and eighth twilights. Three corpses lie in the closed room of a seeing girl. Illusions to illusions. Illusions of the blind girl's song. Illusions of a closed room. Yeah. It was never a closed room. Uh, Doesn't matter. Easy to kill. Easy. Piece. Look at the way the, the screen is just getting cut up. Oh my god. The only thing that still remains about that one is whether those three were actually dead then. Because it's like, there's blood everywhere, but there was no one to identify the corpse because Nandrew was dead. I think you could take a guess. Well done. Yes. You really are splendid. It was a risky game from the very start. What if the guy really wanted to see that dead face anyway and just stepped inside? Oh. George, George! Oh, too good. That's what it means to abandon oneself to fate. <laughs> That's what your roulette is, isn't it? <laughs> These are the miracles and certainly that we're talking about, my dude. Oh, let's continue. Second game, first twilight. The six with their stomach split in the closed room chapel. Oh, we didn't even cover the tenth twilight. Hmm? From episode one. Mm? Which one was that? What uh, are you, what's your when they're gone. No, we didn't. We did not. Okay. It's very interesting. Anyway, uh, illusions to illusions. The gold truth locks the lock of illusions. Yep. Now the gold truth, what do they mean by the gold truth in this instance, my dude? Oh god. I reckon you could take a stab. I mean... What is what is the gold truth in this situation? I feel like you can figure this out. I don't think it's impossible. I mean... Rosa is an accomplice. Yeah. And she's the one who says it's locked. Yeah. 
What's the gold truth? I... Fuck. I mean, I guess it's like... Forget the gold truth we've seen so far. I'm trying to... What yeah. kind of gold truth could make Rosa lie? Oh, right. Oh. Yeah, those things. Yeah, those... That things. Those things. Second game, second Twilight. The two who are close cannot even be close as corpses. Illusions to illusions. Illusions who have fulfilled their role do not leave even a corpse behind. Yep. Oh, here we go, boys. Second game, four, fifth, and six Twilights. That's his closed room. None are left alive. Earth to Earth. No one would dispute that a coffin is a closed yes! room. Yes! Yeah, boys. Oh, my oh, God. Boy. Here we go. I should be so hyped about all this death, but here we go. Second game, seventh and eighth Twilights. The two slice of death by the red-eyed illusion. Earth to Earth. Illusions to illusions. No illusion can create a corpse. Yep, they did not die there. Yeah, it's a good thing the doctor died in that circumstance. <laughs> Every time the blade passed through Claire's body, golden flower petals flew everywhere. The petals covering her heart were being torn away bit by bit. The illusion of the witch was breaking down and, became, and becoming flower petals. Third game, first twilight. Six corpses connected by the linked closed runes. This is one I need to know. Illusions to illusions. In the closed room ring, the end of the beginning overlap. <laughs> you called that at the time, too. I did. Third game, second twilight. Not right at the time, but close. Not entirely. Who's the closest one? Mm. The corpses of mother and child lay together in the rose garden. Earth to earth. Mm. No falsehoods in their final moments is told. Yep, maybe killed them. Third game, fourth, fifth, and sixth twilights. Three corpses lying in the mansion. Earth to earth. Yep. No falsehoods in their final moments is told. Mm-hmm. Third game, seventh and eighth twilights. The corpses of husband and wife lay exposed under the arbor. Earth to earth. The obvious culprit wields a mutable blade. Yeah. So obviously, EP3 is much more like they actually are dead when you find them. Yeah. Right. Much more straightforward. Hmm. Fourth game, first twilight. Fuck, this is the one I need to know. This is what I'm most confused about. A massacring storm sweeps through the dining hall. Illusions to illusions. Tales woven by the gold truth return to illusions. Oof! Back at it again. Mm. Fourth game, second twilight. The two youths face, the, face a trial and pass away together. Illusions to illusions. Tales woven by the gold truth return to illusions. I... Okay. Mm. I wasn't expecting them to actually be bribed, so I was, I was wrong on that one. To an extent. I mean, they did still die in the end, theoretically, but... Yeah. yeah. Well, the point is that they're they're listening to the culprit, right? That's the point. Yeah, I suppose. And I guess it was only Battler that ever got to identify their corpses as well, so it is impossible that it was a ruse right to the end. Mm. But, I mean, I guess we did get read truths about a lot of the deaths. Fourth game. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth Twilights. None of the runaways are left alive. I split this up differently. Earth to Earth. Illusions to Illusions. Silent corpses adorned by fiction. Yep. That's probably the least clear one we've had. <laughs> Fourth game, ninth twilight. And none shall be left alive. Earth to earth, illusions to illusions. <laughs> when fiction is shut up inside a cat box, it becomes truth. Yeah, boy! There's no evidence on a fucking island that's just exploded. <laughs> oh. That's it, e dude. Episode four was the most confusing one to, to theorize, like, and like lock in final answers, and it's also the one we get the least clear of course. picture. But I don't how, fucking that's care. How it should be. I don't fucking care. Mm. Over and over again, Claire's body was sliced by the pitch black sword. 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 The pitch black sword. Oh. Oh my god. So thus far, correct, 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 correct. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, no, correct, you called correct. You called pretty much Let's, everything. Oof. I'm oh, man. What a fucking emotional roller coaster this episode has been. I want to push to the end. I'll be real honest with no, you. No, just keep going. If okay. I'm, uh, if you're trying, because we'll, we have plenty of gush, time to gush later. As proof, the chapel was now filled with golden flower petals, which danced around like old snow. It's beautiful. Who wouldn't want their last moments to be like that? Even Burns got a soft spot. Gold snow was like confetti in the finale of a show. The curtains were finally falling on the stage that was her. Then, one final question. Sure. I remember this. Oh god. Claire slowly raised her hands. The sword she held became golden rose petals and melted away. She stood there, 
arms wide, waiting for the final strike. Oh my god, this is like the end of episode fucking four all over again. I know. What if Battler was competent? Who am I? Does she not die? Illusions to illusions. The promised reaper lowers the curtain on the tail regardless of the yep. witch's will. There it is. The pitch black blade that's will swung high. Cut down Claire's form. Bit of religious symbolism there, I think. Just a bit. The cross, the cross there. The sacrificial Claire. Mm. At the same time, she was blown away by a gust of wind. Her human form crumbled in an instant, became a storm of golden flower petals, and was torn apart. After she was blown away, a golden heart remained in midair, but it too was swallowed by the torrent of wind and broke down into flower petals. The golden torrent of wind swirled around the chapel. Then, the swallowed petals scattered out of existence and vanished. Oh my god. I'm dizzy. I'm actually dizzy. A few remaining petals danced around like snowflakes, and those final vestiges decorated the chapel, the chapel beautifully. The chapel. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm speaking French, I'm speaking in tongues. Oh, I'm so just, like, dizzy in the head right now, because I'm remembering my first time in the sequence and how fucking intense it was. Ugh. A beam of light lit the center of the stage. There stood Claire, whose tale had ended. Then, slowly, softly, she faced the audience and bowed. Applause spread throughout the room. The long, long tale she had just finished telling was being given a massive applause. It went on and on, and on and on. The stage slowly sunk into the darkness of oblivion. Behind the darkness and the curtain, Claire continued to bow in front of the unending applause and disappeared. People are born with sin and live life to obtain forgiveness from someone. Or perhaps they are born with riddles and live life searching for someone to solve them. Here, all of her riddles have been solved, leaving no lingering regrets behind. People are riddles. They want someone else to solve their riddle. They live life wanting someone to solve the riddle that they are, the most difficult riddle in the world. They want someone to look at the riddle that they are, and they want that person to solve it. For her, that wish has been granted. Her soul will wander no longer. Sleep in endless peace in your cat box coffin. <sighs> Though there had been so many golden flower petals flittering about like a blizzard, not a single one remained. Everything had become dust, vanishing as though there had been nothing there in the first place, and all was silent once more. Come to think of it, even the sound of rain is gone. The rain must have stopped at some point. Meeting you was her salvation. I hope so. She cursed herself and their inescapable dead-end fate and gave up. Meeting you, a happy miracle in her eyes. Saved her in a way that nothing else could. So don't make that face. Hmm. <laughs> that was a pretty tasteful ending. For you. How oh, I only told me to carry out the funeral. Well, I pretty much just called her facilitator. You, and let you do everything. Thank you, Will. Mm. In Claire's place, I want to thank you. Thanks for cutting off all the lingering regrets of a me, of a different fate. Thought I'd see a bit more head clutching and panic from you. <laughs> I understand now. I realize how happy my life has been. If fate had toyed with me, and if I was living in another world, I might have gotten stuck in the same dead end of fate. However, thanks to an extremely improbable bit of good luck, I live in this world. I now know how much that means, how much it's worth. What's up? Why the surprised look? 
Though decent witches didn't exist, I might have to change that theory. Don't worry, no need to change it. I only joined that kid's game to kill some time. And though I lost, I enjoyed playing. That kid died without folding up her game board. I just took charge of cleaning up, as thanks to her for letting me play and because it's the loser's duty. Sure you'd be a lot crueler than this. Crueler? Thought this would be a cruel game that neglects the heart. Yes, it was a cruel game. Though she claimed that the game was fantasy, I brought you along and made it end as a mystery. The illusion of the witch has been spectacularly crushed, and my little bit of revenge is complete. This tale of intertwined loves ends thanks to an absolute and certain willpower. Out of respect for that certain willpower, the witch has certainly made that kid a witch for just two days. Even within this limited span of two days, I have been able to enjoy an endless kaleidoscope. I won't be bestowing my favor, bestowing my favor, so no miracle will occur. However, even this ending is something that chi that child wished for. I wonder which truth actually lay at the end of this endless tale. Who knows? Not being able to say that for sure is what makes it the cat box. When you open the box, you get a tale where no trace of the magic remains, and no one except Ava survives. Now that Ava has died without saying anything, all the truth is inside the cat box. Endless possibilities, all kept within a limited box. Now that I think about it, maybe the whole island where she lived and died was the Golden Land. If you can call a cat box a Golden Land, that is. By the way, Battler has written up the most fun tale imaginable of the inside of the cat box. You mean that book in Beatrice's coffin? That's right. It's the happiest possible tale for her, which he thought of himself. It was a really fun, love-filled, happy tale. I also think that that tale was the most fitting one to put her in to put in her coffin. No, that's wrong. Huh? You heard Claire. You're her hope and her salvation. More than anything else, you living on in happiness will be her salvation. Right. Live happily. That's all you need to do to be that kid's miracle. Yeah. I'll live happily enough for the both of us. I'm surprised you found this kid. Didn't you have to search through about 200,000 of them in that vast sea? <laughs> Such trivialities are all I'm capable of. Oh my god, Burn. What the hell? What the hell are you doing to me? Hmm. And now, the funeral is over. As promised, I've released the barrier. Once you leave, time will start moving again like normal. So you're done with us now? If I don't get back quickly, Diana will start scratching the curtains. <laughs> we weren't together any very long, but thank you for your help. So long. Be happy for the sake of the hundreds of thousands of other yous. It's something, right? When he left the chapel, a beautiful after rain sky stretched out above him. That sky, which was a mix of rain clouds, gaps of sunlight, and the tint of twilight, had a beauty to it that couldn't be described in words. I don't trust Ryukishi right now. <laughs> Something's about to happen. Will slowly descended the stone stairs, stepping through puddles. Then. He waved without looking back, and left the chapel behind. His form and footprints gradually faded away, until there was no trace left. Okay. Time for me to disappear too. Goodbye, Leon. I have you to thank as well. I believe I said some fairly inconsiderate things to you. You have my apologies. You taught me something very important. Hmm. What is it? No, it's nothing. It's been a century since anyone thanked me, so I wasn't sure how to respond. <laughs> and then she just leaves. I'm not sure how to respond. Bye. We'll just see leaves. you later. The castle shrugged, then floated up into the air. Ah, there she is. She's still here. She's still here. Then she looked up at the beautiful seven colors of light shining in through the stained glass, and spoke as though someone was looking down on her from there. How Aurora, was that enough of an answer check for you? Hmm. If you still don't get it, why not gather the other observer, which isn't have a tea party or something? Oh no! Then you can listen to their theories. Oh boy. I mean, so I won't go any further than this. There are no witches who don't think. After all, witches who don't think either die or turn to seaweed. Yes, now you can look back and have a drink, while seeing how much of your theory was right. 
I'm tired of playing the part of the bad guy and of being a Miko. Just stop. No. Just stop. You can't stop. Die or turn to seaweed. No. Mm. No. I'm hurt. No. I'm 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 damaged. You're done with me now. Bye, Leon. And bye to you too, Observer Witches. Bye, Dracono. Thanks for watching. Oh no. <laughs> but it's talking to you. She's talking to you! And castle bursts and disappeared. I am scared. A single golden flower petal glittered. We still have two tea parties. What the fuck is he gonna do and to EP8. us? And EP8. What None. the fuck is he gonna do to us? Leon picked it up. <laughs> it was the only trace of a miracle that remained in this chapel. This is such a fucking roller coaster. Holy fuck! <laughs> At that time, cheery voices could suddenly be heard. It was the relatives. They came out of the waiting room one by one. So this is where you were, Leon. I was looking for you. Mum, my apologies. I was just thinking about something. Looks like the rain's finally stopped. Finally, some good weather. Everyone, let's return to the mansion. I have been told that Beatrice's funeral is over. Dad, where's the head? He'll be here in a sec. Today was pretty crazy, and play along with Dad's little funeral show was a real pain. You shouldn't say that. It was a very important ceremony. That's right. I think it was very important for Father. I'm starving. Go to Sun. I think you could cook up something ah! for us. <gasps> yes, ma'am! <laughs> I'll prepare some tea at once. That's not food. <laughs> Where's Leon? Lend me a hand. Our family head. There you are. As Kinzo came out of the after the others, Leon ran up to him. <clears throat> you did very well today. Beatrice's funeral is now complete. Yes, and I'm sure that Beatrice's soul was saved. How could you know that? I was with Beatrice until a second ago, and I saw her leave on her journey with no regrets. That's how I... That's how I know. I guarantee it. I see. If you say it, then it must be so. Leon, you little scamp. You damn scamp. Ah, what a nerd. Best boy. Or best character. The relatives left the chapel one by one. Leon left too, giving Kinzo a shoulder to lean on. A beam of sunlight peeked through the clouds, looking like a staircase leading up to heaven. Is he about to play seagulls? Is that what's about to happen? I'm, I have no idea what, what's going on. Is no, that, that's, that's, that's it. it? That's it, dude. That's it. That's it. I don't know what you're expecting. I mean, we, we do have the tea parties. We do have like, the tea parties. But like, we are going to die it. in the tea parties. <laughs> Additional new features. Um, there, yeah. wasn't, there wasn't even credits. No game record. I know, no game record. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. That's it, my dude. Bitches is dead. Holy shit. Well, I should say Claire is, is dead. Um. Oh! Yeah, that's it. Um, I don't- I mean, you always say you don't have anything to say, but do you have anything to say right now? Other than see you in the next tea party? I think uh, the phrase, I have nothing to say, means I more have no conclusions to draw. I just have- Of course, of course. Many... brain. I have many brain. You have many brain? Many brain. That's good, that's good. Don't stop thinking or you'll die, so. Uh... Well, I, I think we'll just see you guys all in the next tea party. It, it's gonna uh... be a fun, chill time, with no twists, I'm sure. Okay. We'll see you next time. This might- Oh my god. <laughs> he was reaching for the stop button. <laughs> this might have been more agonizing than all of the surprise <laughs> things we've had thus far. I know. And it's it's great because it was telling you the truth. Right? I know. Like, the truth is the most surprising thing. I went into episode 7, and I probably said it over and over again yes. for episode 7. Not expecting to get answers even in episode 8. Yes. Like, at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I- I think the phrase that I used, which I'm gonna reuse again because I- I like it, it makes sense in my head, is, we don't get concrete answers, but you can see the fucking yeah. shape yeah. of the mold. Yeah, we, we hit the wet cement. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Even though I've been saying, like, we're just being sure on the truth, like, we cannot say with 100% accuracy that this is the truth. Especially, if you're going with the written by someone else theory, because, that, like, magic isn't real. If we're- if we're claiming magic isn't real, then this is all not true. Right? Yeah. Like, there's still room for doubt. There's always room for doubt. There's even room to doubt the rare truth. Like, 
You wouldn't be able to engage in the story at all, but there is even room to doubt that. There is room to doubt literally everything, and that is entirely Ryukishi's intent. It is absolutely It is entirely crazy. his intent to say, even when I'm giving you answers, this may not be correct. You need to think for yourself. Um, like, if you think back on, uh, for example, like, the way I felt during that scene is kind of similar to how I felt the first time I read uh, the scene where Cannon dies in episode one, where he's like, With my last bit of strength, I'll take out this stake that is definitely in my body right now. And it's like a really emotional moment, and it feels really impactful, but it's totally magical bullshit. Yeah. It's totally magical bullshit. Like, you can doubt everything, is my point. Like, the, the thing is... Uh, it's like, so good. As much as you can doubt all of this, and it, it you ha you kind of have to. You can't neglect the heart. You like don't neglect that heart. Why would Ryukishi give us this entire chapter if it wasn't all the actual motive? Don't neglect Ryukishi's heart, you motherfuckers. Yeah, like literally. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. <sighs> I am so passionate about this, and we're not quite at the end, so I can't give you my full feelings. But I feel a lot of feelings, and I'm sure you understand them at this point. I don't think I do. That's one of the interesting things, is like, as much as, you know, I can mm. say like, I understand what's going on, I... I can do the thinking that makes me be able to put in words what's going on, but that doesn't mean I understand those feelings. Mm. Like, the, the significance at which that must have affected the culprit to go to the lengths that they did is crazy. I can be like, yeah, it makes sense that, you know, this led to that, led to this led to that. Yeah. You know, cause and effect, you can push those buttons, but that doesn't mean that you were the one feeling the reason those buttons were pushed. It's true. It's true. We can never know. But that's the point of storytelling. And yeah. this is why I personally connect really well with this work, because I 100% believe in the power of, of narrative in a broad sense. Like, we use narrative. Like, he, like, he, literally, he literally had, like, a, a narrative used to teach a young child. That's what Kumasawa did, which he was like, if you you tell the knife that he wants to go home, like that's yeah. it's, it's such that's that scene is like this entire novel encapsulated. Yeah. The idea that you can try and teach someone something or tell someone a message through a narrative, and to me this applies to tabletop role playing. Like that's that, that's the main thing for me. Probably this applies to speaking with someone. Like a lot of people talk about how uh, when you talk to someone with small talk, like you don't actually learn anything about them. But I think you can learn a lot of people by the way that they conduct small talk. And by the length of time they go along with doing small talk and, and that sort of thing. Like, even by you telling me I don't like small talk, I learn a lot about you. Um, to, like, be, to be clear, that wasn't me. It's not, it wasn't <laughs> you. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm talking about other people. But, like, the, the, the point is that, like, by interacting with other humans, by hearing their stories, by talking with them, by assessing their dialogue, by, by working out the mysteries of their heart, we can learn so much about these people. And in this, in this case, we're obviously being given a very extreme example of, of this... This poor person who, who doesn't even know what way is up or down and creates this Beatrice persona and all this all this stuff. Like But but the, the core the core meaning remains the same. When you approach someone, when you approach a narrative, when you approach a work, when you approach music, fucking whatever, approach it with love, try and see what it's trying to tell you. Even if you disagree with it. Like I fully I would fully understand if you if you yourself had gone through the story and at the end been like, you know what? I get that this is a thing, but I don't agree with, with some of the points that are being made in here. Like, just as an example, like, the idea that you have to find one singular person to love is, is something that is definitely in modern society being kind of tossed around. Mm. Um, that's definitely something... I, I'm not sure if Rikuchi has changed his opinion or whatever, but but the point isn't... The point isn't that Rikuchi is like, screw, screw, it's, it's screw not polyamory. A, it's it's but not this a political is, narrative. No, no. This is what this person is feeling. This it's, person feels yeah. like they need to be with one person and they feel guilty for having this relationship with three people. Yeah, it's it's about the, right? the significance of the emotion, not yes. about like a political commentary. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the whole thing um, with, you know, don't neglect, no, don't neglect the heart. Yes. Is it's not Ryukishi saying like, oh, fuck polyamory and fuck polyamory bunch of nerds it's no it's like this is this is how this character feels and you should feel for them because th this is what they like this is the emotion that they're feeling um because yeah if we break it down like they're in a relationship with three people at once one person who is not even on the same island as them and all three of which are their close family yeah right <sighs> yeah it's like it's messed up but the the point is Listen to people, learn about them, don't make judgments, don't assume someone is an asshole witch before getting to know them, you know? Yeah. It's like... It's such a simple message at the end of the day, and that's what I love about it. It kind of is. It's like, so simple. 
Just um, don't be an asshole. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I mean, there's also a whole bunch of interesting yeah. commentary on, like, the actual presentation that oneself has. Because yes. the, the whole thing is that Beatrice is fucking framed as a villain in episodes yes. one and two. They frame themselves as a villain. They're like, this is the evil me. Yeah. Right? Ugh. Um, and I think, like, the other thing is, you know, I can now see why so many people have been attached to this work for so long. Yes. Like... It's so phenomenally crazy and, like... It touches on so many things. Yeah, like, I won't be that person. I won't be the person that's here that's okay. fucking ten years later leading the charge, pushing this story forward. It's definitely a book that I'd recommend to people. Mm. It's definitely something that I'd encourage people to, like, push through how agonizing visual novels are. <laughs> wow, rude. <laughs> that's okay. But, but like, That's your opinion. That's yeah, really cool. Um, I get you. And this is why I was asking you to be on. Like, have you read any visual novels before? I don't think so. No, I, yeah. I, I read- This is your introduction. I read halfway through the first arc of Little Busters, and I was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Not to completely say Little Busters, but that was- That would have been my- my reaction if I hadn't already read uh, Higurashi. Because Higurashi also has, like- themes of friendship and all that shit, and it does some similar stuff to this, where it takes that theme and then, like, totally twists it and morphs it, but then by the end, you're like, this makes so much sense why it's about friendship. Yeah, I mean... Um, whereas Little Buses is very straight with the whole friendship Yeah, thing. I mean, to me, it's um, like, you know, I listen... My, my main genre of music that I listen and write is metal. Yes. And people don't like it. I can get a lot of value <laughs> and meaning and sonic appreciation out of it. Sonic appreciation? I'm trying to dumb it down into smaller words. That's a good- that's a good phrase, I like it. But Sonic like, appreciation. Ju you know, just because I enjoy that and I think a lot of the music's good is technically well produced, it has a lot of emotion to it, mm. and for all of the values that it has, it doesn't mean that I expect people to enjoy yeah. it, that kind of music, yeah. and I feel the same way about visual novels, and mm. I understand that they have a lot of value, yeah. and I really enjoyed- well, I mean, we're still going, but like, I've really yep. enjoyed reading Urban Echo so yep. far. It feels like a good place to reflect on the whole- on the mystery, because we, yeah. we've basically gotten all the answers, right? So, my goodness. Yeah, it's been a wild ride. I'm looking forward to the recap, which this isn't, where we recap the episode and talk about our broad feelings. And then the series, this is why when you were like, oh, we should do an episode, a, a recap again for all of the individual episodes. And I'm like, I feel like we're just going to get all that out by the end of the series. Probably. Right? But um, I mean, I didn't, I, know, I didn't know it was coming. No, I know. I didn't, I know. Think, I didn't think this was going to happen. I totally understand you, my dude. Oh, uh, boy. Okay, well, I think, I think we should wrap there before we go on another tangent. We will see you all in the tea parties. My Never goodness. neglect the heart.